basketball and music, to me, it's just two different types of art form. And if you don't think basketball is an art, you ain't been paying attention. And today's guest, just like Dame Dollar, he was a beast on the court. And he nice in the booth, too. So stay tuned and check out to see what he got to say and what led him that way. I get conk. Welcome into the Fan Addict Sports Channel for sports fans by sports fans. I'm your man, Coach I. Where are my Georgia dogs at? So I coached high school basketball for about 14 years and AAU basketball just as long as not 15 years. Today's guest played for the organization and I coached for it. I coached the younger team and he was always on the team up up uh one one age older than us. So we got to practice together a lot. I was around him a lot. Good kid. I mean an animal on the court. From I'm talking about from the eighth grade on. And probably I met him in the eighth grade, but he probably was a beast before I even seen him. He's one of the best high school basketball players coming out of South Carolina in twenty thirteen. I think he was actually ranked as the number two senior that year coming out. He got a college scholarship to play for the Mercer Bears 2013-2014 squad. We'll ask him a little bit more about that and how that squad was uh, was a pretty nice squad because that was actually the squad that took down Duke. But without further ado, let's bring in my boy, Donnie Brooks, better known to the people around him as DJ Brooks. What's going on, DJ? What's going on, Coach I? Hey, man, I'm telling you, I'm good to have you on, man. It's been a while. It's been a while since the hurricane days, dog. No, man, I appreciate you having me on here. It's an honor, man, for sure. It's an honor. Hey, man, I just appreciate you taking time out to schedule. You got a lot get going on right now. We're going to get into that later on, too, because I want I want you to put up your stuff, man, get you out there. Oh, yeah, so, sure. hey, man, tell me this. So, you know, I already informed the... Uh, you know, the viewers, you are uh, one of the best high school players in, in South Carolina coming out. You got your scholarship to Mercer, Mercer Bears, 2013. So you was on the 2013-2014 roster that took out Duke in the first round. Take me from there and how you made your way to North Greenville, man. Man, that road was a crazy road, man. But it was a road that I'll never forget. So like you said, man, being – Top point guard in the state of South Carolina, really. You know what I'm saying? Number one guard in um, South Carolina, point guard. And then uh, having unfortunate events and getting hurt. I got hurt my summer, summer going into my senior year. Um, but I never went to the doctor. I heard it at a camp. And then we had um, practice before the season starts, and I heard it again. Still didn't go to the doctor. It was like, it's a sprain of CL. And now I'm like, man, this is my senior year, first game. I'm playing, like, um, you know what I'm saying? Let's strap it up, put something on the knee. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's get it. Let's go. And so, like, maybe 40-something seconds into the game, I'm jumping the cut to do it off. And I uh, hurt it again, hurt my knee. Mm. Like, I went to the doctor this time. You know, and they was like, um, my knee was, was messed up. I had torn ACL, both sides of my meniscus. It was like a bomb went off in my knee or whatever. So having that news, and thank God with my dad, he guided me through my recruiting process. So I recruited, I mean, um, I committed the end of my 11th grade year okay. to Mercer. So I was good, you know what I'm saying? I already signed and everything. So I went out there to Mercer and, um, you know, just rehabbing the whole time. And it just, my rehab wasn't, it didn't work out how I wanted it to work out. You know what I'm saying? My knee was still messed up. And then I'm a freshman. I'm trying to prove myself to the seniors. I'm trying to prove myself to the coaches. You know how them D1 coaches is. They like, hey, man, hey. you ain't coming. Like, you know what I'm saying? Got to move I, on. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what to do with you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You cause. So I was dealing with that whole situation, you know what I'm saying, and just trying to still find myself as a young man or whatever. And so um, they told me, end of the year, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to come both summer sessions. I'm going to get my knee right. I'm going to be good. You know what I'm saying? It's a redemption story or whatever. And so I get in the office, man. He like, yeah, you're a great kid, such and such. You know, but I'm going to have to give you two options. You can either stay and get a free education, but you'll never be able to play again. Like, you'll have to sign something, and I'll be on an administrative scholarship. Yeah. Or I have 
transfer. And so I was like, damn, man. You know, like, people, like, you know, everybody tells us about a college education. You know what I'm saying? So that was my whole mindset. Like, it's a free education. A lot of people are not able to be in that situation to get a free education. So, you know, I was going to stay and just, you know, just stay and just have my dreams. Basically, like, what ifs, you know what I'm saying? But one of my old coaches, uh, Ice, yeah. he called me. And my dog. Man, I, yeah, he called me. He's like, you know what I'm saying? You could still play. You could transfer. I'm like, transfer? Like, I never thought about that. It's always been, like, the one team that I'm with, we're going to ride. We're going to do what we got to do. We're going to be the best team. Yeah. So, like, you could transfer, you know, get your knee right and stuff. So then I ended up doing that. And I took two years off. Yeah. I took two years off from playing basketball. And I was just working, rehabbing. Me still was not just like how I felt. I know I wouldn't be the same player, but I know when I can go out there and still kill. You know what I'm saying? During that two years, I remember seeing your dad at the gas station and he was like, some of the doctors didn't even think he was going to be. They was like, yeah, he, you know, he'll be able to play, but he won't be, you know, what he was or whatever. But. How was that? Like that's that's rough. That's um, it is rough, but for some reason, man, I knew that I was gonna finish. Yeah, like I knew that I was gonna play. I knew that I didn't come this far to for it to end like that. I was like, I know it's not gonna end like this. I don't have to be the same player, but just give me some speed. You know what I'm saying? That's all I need. Some speed. <laughs> you feel me? Because I start off my shot pure, so I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And once I get in the lane, I'm crafty. I can finish. Just give me a little song. You feel me? So yeah, I ended up getting the- all stupid. Up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna say, in my IQ, I'm good. So, so I ended up getting meniscus transplant surgery. Okay. And so I ended up standing night at the hospital. It's like a big surgery or whatever. And so I worked out for Lenore Ryan. And worked out for him. He's like, you know, we just don't see it right now. Maybe um, next year. So I'm like, damn. So that's off the table. So now I work out for USC Aiken. Same thing. You know what I'm saying? We just don't see it, man. Da, 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 da. So then um, North Greenville, you know what I'm saying? They just always been, um, like, they reached out to me. They knew what I was going on with me. So I reached out to Coach Lister. And he was like, yeah, man, you know, we love to have you, man. You know, just off your track record and what you can do. You know what I'm saying? We love to have you. I was like, shit, bro, this is two weeks before school is about to start. Mm-hmm. Literally two weeks before. Yeah, so I'm like, I done sat out two years. Like, man, let's just go. Let's get on the team and let's just go. So I ended up going there and uh, get on, like, a partial scholarship or whatever. Yeah. And um, I got on the team, man, and, and worked my way up to, you know, starting and finishing combat player of the year, third mm-hmm. all Um Last year, well, my last year, um, I finished third in the country in three point percentage which is crazy Buckets. You know what I'm saying? exactly <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? i just did what i had to do man you know what i'm saying and just grinded through it man that's crazy you talking about the three point percentage because growing up you was always could hit the three but that wasn't ever your first option you was more of a take them off the dribble pull up type dude or take them off the yeah. dribble finish at the basket so that's crazy though like that you, your, your game even developed after your injury you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. It did, and that's one thing that I noticed when I was playing. Like, before, it was just straight athleticism. Like, I was quicker, faster than most of the guys, so I just get to my spots and just finish, you know? But once I had the injury, it's like, okay, damn, I'm still cooking these dudes, you know what I'm saying? But I'm beating them more at a a psychological game, you know what I'm saying? More a mental game, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it definitely expanded my game a lot. So your first full year after the surgery when you was cleared to play and everything, mentally, because physically, players are always ready. I mean, doctors ain't going to, you know, clear you until you're actually physically ready to go. But like I've been trying to tell people, for instance, uh, you know, I'm a big football fan. So right now, University of South Carolina got a running back, Marshawn Lloyd. And I've been trying to tell my South Carolina friends, temper your expectations because just because you physically cleared don't mean your mental is the same as it was before you got hurt. How you get over that? Like, when do you feel like mentally you was like, okay, I'm DJ again? For sure. So, like, the doctors, they said that it takes, like, a year for you to really start to feel like yourself. Okay. Which I was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. But once I get out there, like, it's, it's showtime. But um, it really does take a year. It really does take, like, a full year for you to just feel good. Like, 
putting good pressure on your knee to run and like you jumping off one leg and stuff like that. It really does take take about a year. You know what I'm saying? Some people is quicker, some people is fast is um later, but I would say the average is about a full year. Mm-hmm. And um that just comes with, you know what I'm saying, repetition and just keep practicing, practicing and playing and then noticing um like one time one of my trainers, she was like, I was working out and she was like, DJ, like your knee is fixed. You good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had your surgery, your knee is fixed. You good. So, you know what I'm saying? People, um, you know, let me know, like, hey, you still kind of timid. You know what I'm saying? You don't even notice it. You know what I'm saying? But as you keep playing and playing, it just get better and better. I think it's like it's in the back of your mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, the doctor say I'm good, but, yo, man, I was just out for, like, two years. Like, you know? Exactly. He's like, I know I can do it when I can do it, but I don't want to, I don't want to go out here and be trying to break our ankle and then break my ankle, you know what I'm saying? Or, or tear my knee up, you know what I'm saying? So, but I'm glad you made it back, man, because I love watching you play basketball, man. You are a highly intelligent basketball player, dog. And I, I used to be so like, when we were using ninth grade and y'all, y'all had the ninth grade canes, we had the eighth grade canes. I had some talent but I ain't had nobody that had the IQ. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, God, like, God, man, Cook got all the players with the IQ. Like, where, where my DJ at? Where my, where my Quavo at? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I had some, like, some dudes that just wouldn't give up. That's just all that was. Yeah, you know? You have both, man. And I'm coaching now. What? So I, yeah, yeah, I coach at Eastside on JV Girls. That's what's up. Yeah. So I see now the difference between having the players that understand the game of basketball and having the players that just play basketball. It's like, it's a totally, it's, it's different. It's night and day. It is. You know it is because a lot of kids are just naturally gifted. And you yeah. they be like, oh, I can do this and I can do that. But when you got a kid with a high IQ, like I will say, rest in peace, Dre, Dre probably had the highest IQ on my team. And then like, you know, as when y'all was juniors, I actually got the missing piece. I had Doria, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we was really able to put it together because now I got kids with talent and I got kids with IQ. Like You had the athletes too, man. Yeah, I had some athletes. I did have some. Now, we ain't never had nobody over 6'4 uh, outside of Doria, but we had some athletes though. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dog. But it helped when we used to practice with y'all, man. I mean, I knew we weren't going to beat y'all, but I'm like, if we can at least score some baskets on them, I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying, put some, some real baskets, y'all wasn't giving us nothing. I'm like, you know how we did, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's what's up, man. I'm glad, I'm glad everything worked out because, like I say, for a time, I know just from personal experience with people that I know, when you get an injury – you had your lifelong dream of going to college, you know, playing whatever sport you play, and then it don't work out the way you. Some people, it's easy mentally to fall by the wayside, and you didn't do that. You stayed strong. So during this process, now, now look, now I went on, a, I went on a lot of trips with you. Now in high school, I, I ain't never, yeah. I ain't never hear you spitting no bars or nothing. So when, when the, when, when the music play come into this, <laughs> man, that's crazy because the music came like. I say my junior year, I was going through another little injury. Um, I think it was just kind of wear and tear and not taking care of my knee. Um, just thinking, you know what I'm saying? When you have a serious injury like that, whoever listening to this, take care of your knee you have, or take care of your body. You have to take care of it. It's not like before when you could just, you know what I'm saying, leave, not get ice. Like you need the ice after practice games, all that. And so I was slacking. And so my knee was messing up on me. And um, I had sat out for really like, a majority of the season. Yeah. And so I just started getting into um music. My homeboy Quez, uh shout out to my my boy Quez. He um he had a studio at his school at Warren Wilson in Asheville. And so I'm in Tigerville at North Greenville. So Asheville like an hour away. So I drive up there and we get in the studio, man. He always like, Yeah, bro, come on, bro. You good, you good. I'm like, bro, I suck, bro. I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> but I could put together some stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I just freestyler and so i always like to write and so like write music is like poetry yeah so i just put it together you know what i'm saying and make it work that's what's up man and it, it, tell me about this so we all know dame dollar rap i actually listen yeah. to a lot of his raps i think i like dame dollar and i i actually in my intro i compared you to dame dollar beast on the court and nice in the booth you know but talk about like 
I don't know if you've heard it or, you know, like, well, man, you a baller, man. You, you know, what you doing rapping? You a baller. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you, how you, what do you tell them people? Honestly, I haven't gotten that, though. Okay. okay. Like, and, I, but I know what you're talking about. People will try to discourage you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But honestly, I ain't never, I haven't had that. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't hang around too, too many people. Yeah. And the people that I do hang with or whatever, it's all respect, so. You know what I'm saying? My homies they ain't never just like, bro, DJ, give it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's how I know I'm on to something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you don't, I, you don't hang with no yes man dudes. You know what I'm saying? They're going to tell you how it's it, how it is. <laughs> they're going to tell me. They're going to let me know. So I ain't, honestly, I ain't never, I ain't never ran into that. So I must be doing something good. I must be nice. Well, hey, I'll tell you, you know, like I say, the first one clutch. Hey, like, yeah. I'm going to tell you, dog, before you dropped it, I, I, you know, I've been seeing you on social media and you was doing it and then you dropped it. I was like, and I'll just be honest with you. In AAU, every time we used to take y'all out of town, I swear at the gas station, I got hit up by every local rapper <laughs> trying to get, <laughs> trying to get me to buy Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's back in the day. We ain't had a Disney. No, you know no. Hey, matter of fact, we used to go to the, what was that? The, uh... The icebreaker in North Augusta, it without yeah. fail every year I'm at the gas station. Some dude like yo yo yo, so you know oh, when you have and then you know oh Mike and so Mike my my former point guard he in the, he he rapping too and actually before I had heard him I was like yeah I used to joke with him when we was back in the day he used to actually spit balls then too and I'd be like Mike you don't want none of this and of course I can't rap so. <laughs> but Mike was doing it then, and apparently, you know, you doing it now. I just like the fact that y'all, you know, y'all actually good. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, with all of those guys trying to always give me CDs, I had got to the point where I, I was like, look, I don't want no more CDs. I don't want nobody else tell me yeah. they're rapping. <laughs> That's funny. But uh, like I said, I heard Clutch. I was like, DJ, do it. it. It made, listen, I know I ain't never actually coached you, but you was in the organization. It made me proud. I'm like, look at my boys doing it. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, man, it's, you know, it's it's definitely different, man. Um, you know, transitioning from basketball to, to the music, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And just like, it's not, it's not promising, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you really got to step out on faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta study the music, and then like you might have a good little run where you, you know, what I'm saying, in the studio for two, three weeks. You know, grinding, grinding, and then life happens or something like that, and then you catch yourself not in the studio for like a month. You know what I'm saying? So I had to use those same principles that come with basketball. Like, man, I gotta stay my butt in the gym. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Such as working. If I ain't working, bro, gonna get better than me. Or if I get out there on the court, I'm gonna be rusty. I was just about to ask you, know you that, like your mentality going into it, because. With basketball, you have an opponent. You like, okay, we playing, you know, we playing X, Y, Z. Let me focus on them and let me get right. But with the music, you really it, it ain't no ain't no ain't no tangible opponent. You know what I mean? Yeah, you really going against yourself, like you were saying. So say if you playing somebody, sorry, you know what I'm saying. You ain't gonna prepare that good that much that week. You know what I'm saying. You just gonna skate by yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying. The music, it's like, it's a part of yourself, so you have to give it your all, you know what I'm saying? You get in the booth and you ain't having no energy when you doing it, they gonna feel that, you know what I'm saying? They gonna feel that, and, and for somebody that's listening to you, like you listen to my song, that could be the very first time, Time if I ain't put my all into you, like, you write me off, you know listen, what I'm saying? you always gonna be my dude, hey, but I'm gonna tell you, had your first one not been hot, I'd have told you. I be like, yeah, I don't really, I don't really mess with DJ like that. We we basketball people, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was, and I was like, okay. So I immediately was like, okay, I'm, when it come out of iTunes, I'm gonna go ahead and download it. So you know, I already got it on my on my. On my I'm sorry, uh, Apple people, uh, Apple Music. It ain't iTunes no more. <laughs> and actually, because Clutch was so good, it actually made me want to listen to Hun, and I had never heard him. Oh yeah, he's yeah. awesome. He's he's tough. He's tough. Yeah, and I'm glad that I have somebody um that's like taking a role yeah. with me. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm falling off or I get discouraged, like he'd be like, you know what I'm saying, bro, lift me up. Like, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? You need to do this, you need to do that. And same with me. You know what I'm saying? If I feel like he ain't giving his all or you you know what I'm saying, you BSing on this, hey bro, come on, pick it up. 
You know what I'm saying? You remember what the vision was? You know what I'm saying? So That's what's, it's always, what's up? Since my, you a former college uh, athlete, what you think about yeah. these name, image, and likeness going out now where the players can get paid? I think it's I think it's fair. Okay. I think I think it's fair. And that's just like there's no other way. Like, you know what I'm saying? For so long, NCAA been getting all this money off these players. Mm. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have the freedom to uh just leave, you know what I'm saying, as far as straight out of high school, you don't get the freedom to, you know, transfer schools or yeah. you know what I'm saying? You just like you know, and they playing you like puppets. You know what I'm saying? And then if you have a situation where someone gets hurt, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to get compensated for that. It's just like we cut your scholarship or whatever. Yeah. You know, so I think that's definitely fair. And it's, it's going to make people grind harder. I, I, I <laughs> think know? so. You know, money is always a motivator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's going to make people want to win all that. So it's, it's good across the board, so, man. Just have – guidelines with it and rules and stuff that's what i think as long as they can regulate it you know i think that's i think that's good but like i say like you said right uh college sports billion dollar industry so it's only right that the players yeah. get some of all this money that they helping you bring in especially when a coach can sit you down and say hey uh you can either stay here and get a academic you know academic help or i mean academic scholarship and then just chill or you can transfer you know what i'm saying it's like when we can't use your physical talents, we ain't got no need for you. So you got to have some kind of backup plan. Exactly. So when you was, let me ask you about basketball, back to that. So what's the difference? Mercer Division One that you got North Greenville, which is uh, NAIA? No, 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 no. Division Indiv- I'm thinking about Taz, Indiv- another, one of, another one of Greenville products who made it, made it out. So, uh, tell me, is there was there a big difference in like the facilities or the resources and stuff like that? Was it a difference? <laughs> man, I love both spots. Like that's home. Like wherever I go, it's home. But man, it's night and day. <laughs> like I'm gonna break it down to you, man. It's night and day from the hard work to the facilities. Like okay, so when I was at Mercer, we got first day of classes. We go down there to the coach's place or whatever, and I come into the room, and it's all my books right there. I just got to sign off all my books, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to do nothing. I get to North Greenville. I got to go to the bookstore. <laughs> I got to look at, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to get this book. I got to get that book. Then I got to pay for the books. I'm like, oh, my God, bro. I'm like, man. I feel so sorry for the people who, you know what I'm saying, who are just regular students. And then as far as preparation, man, like we had binders at Mercer, you know what I'm saying, binders. We write down all scouts. We write down all the players' percentages. We write down all the players' plays. We've got our plays. Um, It's just, okay, and then you got, and then well, when you go to North Greenville, it's just like you'll, um, you'll scout like two days before, and that's it. And it's just like slides. He does this, he does that, you know what I'm saying? It ain't too in-depth, you know what I'm saying? And then um, Mercer, like, you ain't really got a lot of time to yourself. Like, you constantly doing yeah. something. Constantly, you got practice. We done had three-hour practices there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might have practice, individual, and weights. And then you're a freshman, you got study hall, too. So that's all in one day, you feel me? <laughs> So you really just like, man, like, where is the time? You know what I'm saying? But I was blessed to have some really, 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 really cool dudes up there at Mercer. So they made my time just, like, so much better. You know what I'm saying? Coaches cussing me out, yelling at me because I can't make sprints because my knee is it's like somebody stabbing me in my knee. You know what I'm saying? But my boys, they like, hey, man, you good. You good. Don't worry about it. You know how coach is, da 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 So that was real to have them. And I think that's why we were so good. Yeah, that y'all year. was real good there, yeah. <laughs> So to beat Duke, they, really exactly. It's only it's only been a couple of teams to beat Duke in that first round, like that. Y'all, VCU, and uh, the team that CJ McCullough played for. I forget who that was. Uh, Lehigh. Lehigh, Lehigh, right? Lehigh. So that's what's up, man. I be trying to tell people, man. Like it doesn't matter whether it's Duke. You know, comparing Duke to like a uh, 
a smaller, you know, comparing Duke to Mercer, I'm pretty sure there's difference. But then from Mercer to North Greenville, there's differences. Resources and how people go about it. It's like, for instance, you say, you know, <laughs> you go to Mercer, you just roll in, you got books right there. That's it. Just yeah. take that. You know what I'm saying? And then you go to North Greenville, you're like, oh, so I got to pick my books out. Then I got to, you know, yeah. give you the payment form. Then, I, you know, it says it's a lot of stuff. And that's not even it. I know it's a lot more stuff, but those kind of things yeah. play a part. But the fans don't get to see all that. All they get to see is you in between the white lines and what you do. They don't know, like, you got a lot of stuff going on. Like you said, Mercer, you need to have a lot of time for yourself. But you still, you got to... Uh, slight, you know, you got torn meniscus, and you still supposed to meet the sprint time and everything. For real, and like going back to what you said, like those resources and stuff does play a difference because I feel like you can get the most out of the players. Like I've had some really good players at North Green. Yeah. that was good. They could have played Division One for sure. You know what I'm saying? But with the situation that North Greenville is, like it's kind of it's real lenient. You know what I'm saying? So. You don't get those guys who are forced to get in the gym to do individuals, you know what I'm saying? Forced to go to classes, forced to go to study hall, you know what I'm saying? So they're not flunking out or whatever, missing semesters and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got the big facilities, like, they want to come in there and work out. You know what I'm saying? So when you go to somewhere like North Greenville, you really have to be like, okay, I'm here for a certain reason. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't no social life, really, at North Greenville, like, you know what I'm saying? I had some friends or, like, I had girls that, I, you know what I'm saying, would kick it with to pass the time and stuff. But, um, like, as far as parties, there ain't really no parties. As far as social life on campus, there ain't really none of that, you know what I'm saying, compared to Mercer or nothing like that. So you really got to come in there and play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be mentally you gotta be mentally focused. And, unfortunately, I ain't going to say unfortunate because most of the time when you go into college to play, you between 18 and 22. So you can't be expected to be as down everybody to be down there like that y'all still kids you know what i'm saying so like you said you you ain't got nobody you know at a north greenville where you're like yeah man you need to get in the gym today you need to get in the gym tomorrow it's like be at practice and then it's like well is that all i gotta do then i'll just and i caught like and that's the thing bro that's the thing i caught a lot of that and that was hard for me coming from mercer to north greenville like i'm i wanted to change the culture yeah. you know what i'm saying but they never saw, they never been to that level, that Division One level, to understand what it really takes to be a great team. You know what I'm saying? So I caught myself a lot of times, like guys really didn't care, or you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't trying to let anything slide. Like you late to practice, like come on, man, be be at practice 15, 30 minutes before practice. You know what I'm saying? Don't be just dragging in here, or you know what I'm saying? Go get some treatment, man. You whining about your leg or your knee or something? Like go get some treatment. You know what I'm treatment saying? Treatment is huge in college. <laughs> And pros. Treatment is huge. <laughs> it is, man. <laughs> you feel like, man, I know you want to feel like a, a young chicken. You know <laughs> so when you see me on the court, hey, preparation and treatment, you see me on the court, if I'm stretching, don't be like, I said stretching because he old. I said stretching because I want to get up the next day and be able to do it again. <laughs> I never understood that, man, until maybe like my junior year, man. I'm like, damn, like, we were running, we doing, um, we doing, uh, uh, what's it called? Like open runs, just yeah. open runs and stuff. Like, the, you know what I'm saying? Cause I had took two years off, so I'm older than the guys. Like I'm over here stretching, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get right. You're stretching. <laughs> they just coming out here. Hey, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I got to give me five minutes. Let me get this stretch so I can kill y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm going to tell you, like, you know how, I don't know if they still do because of the whole COVID, but before COVID, I would play up with a lot of these guys, you know, that you played, that you grew up with, playing with. I would play with them at the Y. And, you know, I'd be like, look, first of all, I can't just walk in the gym. They'd be like, oh, yeah, we got Coach I. I, I, I can't just walk in the gym. <laughs> 40 plus years old and be ready <laughs> so yeah that, hey man. second of all once we start playing i'm gonna let you know all right listen we need to win this game because i'm not really gonna be no good to you this first game hey that's a big thing like don't lose man because you might be waiting two or three games man you just don't feel man, it no listen, more. i know i know you know i saw you you post something you say you still can get disrespectful on that court but i'm gonna let you know dj when you get 40 
the disrespectfulness better happen on the first two games. <laughs> You got to warm up. Because I'm going to tell you, like, we, I remember one time I was playing with Taz and uh, what's my boy name that played at Malden. He was real good. He went to Florida for football. We we ran off about three or four. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking. Uh, yeah, and we ran off about three or four, and then we lost. And they was like, you stand? I was like, I looked at how many people had next. I'm like, I ain't going to be no good to you anyway, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> And that's almost like I've been watching your uh, interviews talking about like them cold football games. Oh. I don't do it. I don't do it. My nephews knew it. And even when they was in high school, like Isaiah played it. Uh, he ran track at Hillcrest. So I don't do extreme weather, hot or cold. So when that. track first start, it's, it's kind of cool, if not cold, because they starting in like, you know, I guess like end of February, beginning of March or something like that. And then they go all the way to May when the, the heat rise. So I would always, he ran the 200, the 400, the four by one and long jump and triple jump. So I'm like, okay, the 200 is always at the end of the track meet. The four by one yeah. is at the beginning of the track meet. And I call him like, yo, where you want me to be? You want me to be at the beginning or at the end? I'm like, I'm not staying for the whole thing. <laughs> I, honestly, I ain't never been to no track meet, you know, but I heard they like super long. Like four, five hours, dude. Like for real, for real. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. And then like with the football, I went to Notre Dame. I know you saw the video. I went to Notre Dame. It's raining. I want, I want to say it's not just raining, DJ. It's raining and it's yeah. like 45 degrees. Like, oh, yeah. I'm it's sitting cold. there. I'm, I'm tired. I'm sitting in the stands. It's not like I'm playing. I'm like. Hey, I got. I was like, I can't do this no more. <laughs> yeah, I feel that, man. That's honestly. I think my last football game I played in the eighth grade, and it was just super cold. And like this dude hawked me down for a touchdown. I was, I had a touchdown. He hawked me down. I ain't even care. I'm like, shit, I don't even care. It's too cold. Yeah, man. that's why I stayed on the. <laughs> hey, that's why I stayed on the inside for basketball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, DJ, we're going to finish up with what I call the Fanatic Five, man. You've seen the videos. Five questions. All right. No, it's All right. <laughs> Who was the best person or team that you played against in all your college experience? I uh, definitely have to say Jordan King at Floyd University. At, uh, excuse me. Jordan Floyd at King okay. University. But he was a but he was a dog, man. He led the whole country in scoring, too. He was average like 30 a game. Yeah. But he had a switch, man. Had a switch. Just go get a bucket. Had some 50-point games and stuff. Yeah, he, he was cold. He was cold. Right. Whether so. you played in the game or not, what was your favorite state of gym that you played in or was in at, uh, with your team? Yeah. In college? I would have to say... Um, I like limestones. Uh, they gym, do. Man. They got a reason, nice gym, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a homey feel. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a home feel. And then just how it kind of sits like this, and then the court's like right there, and you got the lights, and then the cheerleaders at the end with the open court. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like I always had games against limestones. Yeah, so. we used to do a uh, like basketball it. camp at limestones sometimes. That's how. That's okay. how I know about that. All right. So Mercer or North Greenville. Did anybody ever mm -hmm. take a test for you or a professor let you skip an exam? Man, you know, man, I had some people take some tests for me. <laughs> I had to, man. It's either I wasn't prepared, I didn't really yeah. care, man, or they just, I knew they had a better chance than me. So, yeah, I done, I've had, I had a few people take some tests all for right. me. Shout out to them, man. They know who they are. All right, all right. So don't see this next question. Don't seem like this go on too much in football, but in basketball, like when you was a freshman at Mercer, did you go through any like rookie haze and they make you carry bags or pick up their trash or anything like that? Pick up the basketballs mm, nah. after practice? No, nah, I mean like little tedious stuff, maybe like laundry. It was like some picking on, you know what I'm saying? As far as, far as uh, verbal, you know what I'm saying? They going to they gonna give you hell, you know what I'm saying? Just being a freshman. And then they liked me as a freshman too, so they, you know what I'm saying, they talked and give me hell a little bit. But it was all love, you know what I'm saying, it was all love. It wasn't no crazy hazing stories and nothing like that. That's good, that's good. All right, last yeah. question. 
Who are the three sure. most influential people in your life to help you get from high school to college basketball and to finish through your college journey? Word. Um, definitely my dad, my father. Shout out to him. Uh, he just done, did so much for me, man, as far as teaching me how to work hard, man. Uh, like at the age of 12, we used to work out before my middle school practice get some shots up, then go to middle school practice. You know what I'm saying? So he, he taught me how to work hard, and, and I, now I see it paying off and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's all the AAU tournaments and paying for stuff and then driving across the country. You know about that. He a real one. He a real one for sure. Man, I have to say my mama, she uh, just being there, man, just emotional, emotional support. Being there for me, um, you know what I'm saying, encouraging me, telling me I'm a champ, you know what I'm saying. Number one fan. You Mama know how Boots I, always number one fan. You no, know, Mama boost your head up, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying. I walk out with my head hell high because of that. So I appreciate that and all the prayers that she gave me and stuff. Um, and then third, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. I've had so many coaches that helped me um, all the way through though. Oh, mm, mm. I don't know, man. I don't know. I have to say, okay. I'll say this. I'll say Ice. Okay. And I would say that because he really is the one that put that bug in my ear for me to stay and finish. Because yes. I really was gonna stay at Mercer and just graduate. You know. And I know that I wouldn't be the man that I am today had I stayed and just took the easy road out. So, you know what I'm saying, I, I always uh, will remember that moment, you know what I'm saying, him believing in me and stuff like that. So I definitely would say Ice, man. Shout That's out Ice. Ice, man. Ice used to put that yeah, physically, the drills and stuff, Ice used to put y'all, put that work in with y'all in the hurricanes. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Hey, we 14, man. <laughs> All right, I got a bonus thing for you. I, I ain't I never that. talked to you about it. I ain't never talked to you about it, though. My first year coaching right. at Malden. Y'all definitely. Hold on. What year did you coach at? When was your My first year? My first year uh, was Shy senior year. I know you coming there. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, man? Y'all, I've. You was the head, huh? you was the head I coach. I was the assistant coach. Uh, coach Harrison was the head coach. It was you. Trey was on that team, too. Yes, he was. Shout out to my boy. We played y'all at Hillcrest. Y'all gave us the work. Y'all came to Marlin on senior night. (laughs) And we gave y'all the business, dog. Man, y'all ain't give us the business. (laughs) Y'all, we beat y'all by at least 10, I remember. At least. Hey, I got to film, now. I got to film, It wasn't no buzzer beater, DJ. Some threes at the end to come back a little bit. I had some threes at the end. All right, we probably lost my life. Hey, hey, real, where you going with this? Man? Where you going real, with this? Real man? talk, real talk. This? How y'all feel after? Because listen, talent wise, basketball talent, and I ain't talking about heart, but basketball talent, y'all definitely had the better team. Yeah, for sure. Like that one was like that whole game. I still remember that game. Me too. That whole game was a funk. It was a funk. Like we couldn't get in no rhythm. Like we definitely was like the top one of the top five teams in the state. Um, we couldn't get in no rhythm. Like it, it was a good crowd was oh, there. It was swole. It was swole. Shot was going crazy. Shot with bananas. But shout out to EJ and Jamal, Devon. Hey, Devon hit a couple of threes. Hey, them boys. I know y'all all was friends, so them boys got up for y'all. <laughs> yeah, fast they did. So, I mean, they beat us square, fair and square, man, you know what I'm saying? But if we laced up, you know what I'm saying, out of 10 times, 9 out of 10, then that's hey, it. Hey, <laughs> good thing we only played twice that year. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Did y'all make the playoffs? We did. Game? We did. We lost to, uh, God, who we lost to easily. I uh, think. With, uh, Sp- yeah, yeah, we lost to easily by like three at easily. 
Oh, wow. Nah, y'all had a decent, y'all had a good well, team. Well, that was our best lot. team that we had at Marta after that. Because, yeah. like I said, we had some go-getters in that. Even though Shy was the, the mainstay, but we had some go-getters on that team. Like I say, they just had a lot of heart. And then from there, well, you know it. You know yeah. it happened. I'm, I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, you got me on IG Live. People be like, I'm hating on Marta. <laughs> Appreciate you coming into the fan at it, DJ man, showing some love, man. For everybody out there in YouTube land, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Y'all know the algorithm. We're on our way to a thousand subs. Go out on Apple Music and any other platform you get your music from. Check out my boy, DJ Brooks, Donnie Brooks. Clutch is a hit single, and then he got many more out there. So shout out to Coach I. You know what I'm saying? Doing your thing with the fan addict, man. It's going to blow up. Trust me, man. I was first to say it, man. It's going to blow Appreciate up. It. Keep doing what you're doing. Y'all got good content. You know what I'm saying? So I love it, man. I was in the crib watching it about three hours straight, watching all the episodes with Ike, uh, Zach, you know what I'm saying, Taven. I watched all of them. And then the other dude, Samuel. Yeah, I watched all of it, man, for sure. It's good Appreciate stuff. Appreciate it. For DJ Brooks, I'm Coach I, and we out.